Welcome back to the show. Today I want to share some thoughts with you on it's not too late. The older I get, the more I'm seeing people from various walks of life who think that either they don't have what it takes to excel in life or they think they're too old, they think they're not educated enough, maybe they think that they live in the wrong zip code, if there's ever such thing as a wrong zip code. So that's kind of like what the theme is, what I want to share with you on this episode. So the, the enormity of what you feel you, that you need to do can really weigh you down because it's, it's similar to a calling. It's something that it's like a mission in life that you can't quite get comfortable. Have, have you ever been in, you know, on a chair or in a bed that just wasn't right? It just didn't, or maybe a, a, a coat or a shirt that just didn't feel right. That's like how a lot of people are these days. They try to get through life not really satisfying that hunger that's way down deep inside them to do something that they are called to do. Let me kind of share a quick story. There was once a criminal who had committed a crime. Of course, that's what criminals do, right? Anyway, he, he was sent to the king for his punishment, and the, and the king told him he had a choice of two punishments. He could be hung by the rope or see what's behind a big, dark, scary iron door. The criminal quickly decided on the rope. As the noose was being slipped on him, he turned to the king and asked, by the way, out of curiosity, what's behind that, that door? So the king laughed and said, you know, it's funny. I offer everyone the same choice and nearly everyone picks the rope. So said the criminal, tell me what's behind the door. I mean, obviously I won't tell anyone. He said, pointing to the noose around his neck, the, the king paused and, and then answered, freedom. Freedom. But it seems that most people are afraid of the unknown, so they immediately take the rope. It's kind of a corny story, obviously fictional, but how many times have you been faced, maybe in not such a dramatic way, but with an opportunity to do something that's extraordinary, but you were terrified to do what was extraordinary? Let me share some, some wisdom from very famous people. Eleanor Roosevelt said one time, do one thing every day that scares you. Do one thing every day that scares you. Uh, Jane Austen wrote one time, my courage always rises at every attempt to intimidate me. Do you know how many people have not done something great in their life because of multiple reasons? And the big reason is fear. My, one of my biggest reasons that I chose not to do certain things in my life is because for decades I had a horrible stutter and that was that was literally in my way in my own mind 24 7 I get up with it and go to bed with it every single day and then I found ways to overcome it most of the time I, I learned some techniques some tricks some tools to help me overcome it and I wonder about you too how what do you have in your background or in your in your personality that drives you so crazy that you think that you can't do certain things, I use the word can't in quotes, that you can't do certain things in life because you have never done it before and you're afraid of doing it. Hmm. Nelson Mandela said one time, I learned that courage was not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. The brave man is not he who does not feel afraid, but he who conquers that fear. I'll tell you, I've told this short story many times on these episodes, but just doing these shows in the beginning terrified the stuffings out of me. Terrified me. You know why? Because I didn't want to look foolish stuttering in front of you and embarrass myself in front of you. Because, you know, I feel that everybody watching is like Mary Poppins, maybe. They're, maybe you're practically perfect in every way. I'm not at all practically perfect in every way. I struggle and fall on my face all the time. So for me to be in front of the TV, sharing things I've learned, ooh, pretty intimidating, much less getting stuck and stuttering. Yan Martell wrote, who uh, I believe wrote The Life of Pi. He said, I must say a word about fear. It, it is not, it is life's only true opponent. They write, only fear can defeat life. It is clever, treacherous adversary. How well I know. It has no decency, respects no law or convention, shows no mercy. It goes for your weakest spot when it finds it with unnerving ease. It, it begins in your mind always, so you must fight hard to express it. 
you must fight hard to shine the light of words upon it because if you don't, if your fear becomes, listen, if your fear becomes a wordless darkness that you avoid, perhaps even manage to forget, you open yourself to further attacks of fear because you never truly fought the opponent who defeated you. In my world, in my life, I had to face fear head on. I had to stare fear in the face every time I got afraid. You know why? Because if I didn't stare fear in the face, then I was not going to be able to move ahead and do things that are, in some people's minds, extraordinary. But fear for maybe you, maybe for people that you know, is a constant opponent who wants to stop you in your tracks. James Baldwin wrote years ago, I, I imagine one of the reasons people cling to their hate so stubbornly is because they sense once hate is gone, they will be forced to deal with pain. They will be forced to deal with pain. I wonder maybe some of the fear that you have been struggling with for maybe most of your life is a result of the fear that has been thrust upon you as a result of people that have planted negative seeds in your life. Maybe they have tried to keep you from moving forward. They wanted to keep you from going to go backwards, to go back to that old life instead of facing what is possible. They want you to look at yesterday and what you did, all the mistakes, all the terrible things you've done over, your, over the years, instead of focusing forward in what you can do with your life every single day. Christopher Pellini wrote, without fear, there cannot be courage. Again, without fear, there cannot be courage. Think about that a minute. Without fear, there cannot be courage. Do you think that every single warrior that's ever fought any battle has always had courage? They've always been born with this gene that made them fearless? I would suggest to you that there's probably a huge percentage. In fact, I know there's a huge percentage of them that have fear but they faced fear consistently in order to keep going, in order to do things that are extraordinary. Aristotle, 2,000 years ago, said, he who has overcome his fears will be truly free. He who overcomes his fears will truly be free. Today's episode, I'm sharing just a couple of ideas, a few ideas that can help you potentially overcome some of the fears that have been keeping you back so far. It doesn't matter if you're 12, 22, 42, 82. You can still overcome fears that are holding you down. That, let me say it this way, that you have allowed to hold you back. I still have some fears. One of my fears is falling, like heights, fear of heights. It's actually fear of falling. It's a long story behind that one. I'm still trying to overcome some of my fears. E. Lockhart wrote one time, always do what you're afraid to do. It took, it took a guy named Paul, a guy named Paul, I'm not going to use his, his last name, but it took him two or three times to convince me to walk into the studio to talk to the people here about doing TV programs. And we've done over 160 episodes so far. Yeah, you believe that? 160 episodes? Thank you, Paul, for pushing Thank you, Paul, Paul for, for nudging me to say, John, you've got a lot of stuff to share. Get out there and share it. Get out there and do it. But I said, Paul, why, you know, you're fluent. You don't have a stuttering problem. You're, you're not fearful. You do all kinds of great things. Paul said, John, you can do it. Why don't you just go talk to him? Why don't you just... So I met with a guy named Cody, and Cody, the most patient, one of the most patient people on the planet. And I was struggling and struggling, and he was patient. He, he kind of took his time with me, and and he, and then that was, he transferred that to a guy named Mike and, and both these guys are just, have been awesome. And then uh, our son, Tim has been behind the scenes doing the button pushing behind the scenes here. And with this team and then the people who finance this, who allow us to share this information on TV channels across the country in many states, I mean, this couldn't happen without other people. But I had to first get through my head, thanks to Paul, that, you know what, so what I stutter, so what I'm going to make a mistake, so what I'm going to say the wrong word at the wrong time. But people hopefully are going to see my intent through these programs that I'm really just trying to help. I'm just trying to share an idea or two that can help them. So again, E. Lockhart said, always do what you're afraid to do. Francis Chan, who is a minister, he said, our greatest fear should be, excuse me, our greatest fear should not be a failure, but of succeeding at things in life that don't really matter. 
that's what's dealing that's what I've been dealing with the last few years that am I really focusing on things in my life that don't matter for the long haul and I think if you look at it in your own life that there have been times maybe right now maybe today that you might be dealing with struggles and situations in your life that really don't matter let me give you a, a pretty real ex example you and I have chosen to allow ourselves to be around people that don't know that they don't know. We've allowed ourselves to hang around people that are unethical and dishonest. We've allowed ourselves to hang around people that have no goals, no vision, no work ethic. And then they drag us down in a way, they, they pull us back consistently every single day from doing things that we need to do instead of focusing on areas where we need to go, where we, where we need to focus on in order to change our lives for the better. Again, the older I get, I'm much more careful who I allow into my circle. Because anybody that you allow into your circle will either feed your fear, hear me, they will feed your fear and blow that fear up, or they will squash that fear and give you courage and inspiration to do things that you should be doing anyway. Bertrand Russell wrote decades ago, fear is the main source of superstition and one of those main sources of cruelty. To conquer fear is the beginning of wisdom. To conquer fear is the beginning of wisdom. So in my world, I had to decide what should I fear? Yes, if I, if I wanted to walk into a lion's den, that's not too smart, first of all, and I better darn well be fearful of that. Or should I be fearful about standing in front of people and sharing a story or sharing some quotes or sharing a, a concept or two to help other people, not to lift me up, but to help other people or to take a college course or to learn how to drive a car or to, to, to learn a skill or a trade. You have allowed fear to stay in your life more than it needs to stay in your life. I would suggest that most people watching this program, this, this episode, has struggled with fear at least once in your life. And some of us, it, 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 it's, it's like a backpack. We put the backpack on and we carry fear. We get, up, we get up in the morning, we put our fear backpack on and we go through life carrying this fear backpack instead of cutting the, the straps off this fear backpack and letting it go and just not allowing them the fears that other people have seeded into our lives to be factual. Because when you carry fear, for your lifetime, you will not achieve the life that you were intended to live. And again, I don't care if you're 12 or, or 82 or 85 years old, you still have time to make a difference in people's lives. Actor and producer and uh, Hollywood star Will Smith said this. He said, fear is not real. He said, the only place that fear can exist is in our thoughts of the future. It is a product of our imagination, be causing us to fear things that do not at present and may not ever exist. That is near insanity. Do not misunderstand me. Danger is very real, but fear is a choice. Fear is a choice. In 1988, in the summer of 1988, my uncle Harry Rainier came by our house and sold us a life insurance policy. My wife and I had been married about three or four months at the time. We were in our, I was in my early 20s and I was working in retail making $7.35 an hour. And he says, why don't you think about getting into the insurance business? Now, mind you, back then I had a horrible, horrible stutter. It was really bad. And I said, Uncle Harry, I can't you know, sell anything. I mean, I sell cameras because I study photography. I love photography. I do well with that. But Selling insurance, you mean like going to people's houses and talking to strangers? No, 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 no way. Now, by then he had, Uncle Harry had been in the business, in the insurance business some 30 years. And I was like, Uncle Harry, I can't do that. I can't even talk right. He says, John, why don't you go talk to a guy named Joe Ciampa in another office in the same firm that he was with. And I was like, Uncle Harry, I can't. he says, John, just go talk to Joe. So I went and I scheduled an interview and went and talked to Joe Ciampa and his manager, the guy that worked for Joe, his name John McGinnis, came in and they interviewed me. And then longer story short, they eventually hired me into the insurance business, which is 
I still don't understand that. But I did well. I, I was still stuttered, still had people slam doors in my face, still, people still laughed at me all the time. But I was in the top three or four in the office almost every week in sales. Then I moved into management and the, the career just evolved over a period of 30 years. But I had to look fear in the face and, and take the chance of being laughed at, which I was laughed at a lot. I wonder if maybe there's some things that you want to do in your life, but maybe you're afraid to be laughed at. Maybe you're a little intimidated that you might fall on your face, or maybe you think that maybe you have, um, you don't have what it takes, or maybe you don't have the, the IQ to do certain things, or maybe you have some baggage that has been dragging you down. I'm, I'm just telling you right now, that the most passionate people that I've read about in business and that I follow in business have issues. Yeah, even the most successful people that you see on TV and in the movies, on cable and on YouTube, they have issues. Some of them have serious issues, like way more serious than you do, but they get up every single day, they face their fears, they face what they think that they cannot accomplish and they accomplish it anyway. Yes, is it still a struggle? Absolutely. Does it still get on their last nerve? Yup. Do they still have anxiety? Do they still have some fears that still try to pick, 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 pick? Yep, sure does. But they keep getting up. They keep facing it. They keep fighting over it. And then you're going to find with fear, by the way, with fear, the more you push back at fear, the softer the scream gets of fear in your head saying you can't do this. Because as you continue to do the things that you thought that you couldn't do enough times, the, the, the scream of fear gets softer and softer. Yeah, it's still there, but you, then you can hardly hear it because you're doing so much more now because you've realized that fear is a bully. Fear is a liar. Fear is somebody that, not somebody, fear is a feeling that tries to get you to think that you don't have what it takes to do great things. I'm telling you today, in the taping of this show today, wherever you are in your life right now, you have everything you need to accomplish great things in your life. But you need to believe that. Herman Melville wrote, he wrote, ignorance is the parent of fear. Ignorance is the parent of fear. When you understand what fear is made of, what the components are, what the ingredients are of fear, it has no substance anymore. It has no power over you at all. I mean, there's people now in my family, in my life who've known me a long time, who cannot believe what I've been able to accomplish over the years because they know the old John. They know the John that was scared of his own shadow. He, they know the John that was bullied in high school. He know, they know the John that was beat up in high school because he, he had short hair and everybody else had long hair and, and he stuttered horribly and he played the guitar when he was eight and nine and 10 years old and everybody else was doing their thing, right? I, I, was, I was the brunt of everybody else's jokes. And now they look at John Carver and say, whoa, John, you're doing X, Y, and Z. Wow, how, how? Well, the day came, I'll tell you exactly where it started. The day came in 1983 when I was working in a photo lab and I was, my job was to process or print uh, color pictures of high school portraits. That was my job because I had studied photography. I was 17 years old working full time in this lab. And I was sitting in this room, this literally this dark room, pitch black room that was about, I guess, six feet by eight feet. And my job, there was a little button on the floor. I would click this button, move the negatives over and print these pictures, right? And one day I walked in there with my Walkman. Yes, I'm that old, with my Walkman. And sitting there for a few hours in the pitch black. And I asked myself, is this what I wanna do for the rest of my life? because I'm afraid to talk to people, because I'm afraid of looking foolish in front of people? Is this, is, this, is this what my life is destined to be, sitting in a six by eight dark room, processing senior portraits? Well, I decided that within a few months of that time, I got out of that. And then I was in a position where I was talking to people in, uh, in early 1984. I started, I was, in a, uh, I was working full time and 
in a position where I was talking to people all day long. Yup, I stuttered bad, bad, bad. I couldn't even answer the phone properly. The, the name of the store that I was working in in 84 was a place called Photo First. It was F-O-T-O, Photo First, not P-H-O-T-O, but F-O-T-O. And my boss's name was Sharon Tringali. And she hired me. She came to our school and, and met me and, and hired me very quickly. But when a customer would call on the phone, I couldn't get out photo first. I, would, I, couldn't, I couldn't get it out. I get stuck on the Fs. I couldn't get it out. But you see, Sharon was so patient with me. She worked with me. She, she coached me. She helped me. She, she knew what I could become way back in 1984. You need people like Sharon in your life to remind you of what you have in you that you can accomplish more than what you think you can accomplish. Yeah, you can accomplish more than what you think you can accomplish. All of us need Sharon's in our lives. Jack Canfield, the guy who co-wrote Chicken Soup for the Soul, said one time, he said, everything you want is on the other side of fear. Everything you want is on the other side of fear. For me, that's been the case. Everything I've wanted, or most everything, not everything, most everything I've wanted in my life has been on the other side of that big bully called fear. And once I shoved fear to the side, and huge opportunities opened up because fear was blocking my vision from seeing what was possible. And I wonder maybe in your own life, has fear been blocking you from seeing things that were just, just beyond that big bully of fear that you can't see because he's so big, he's so tall, he's so round, you can't see around it. But then once you force yourself through that bully and push that bully out of the way, then you say, oh no, now I understand why fear has been blocking me because behind fear is opportunity. It's huge opportunity. I'm telling you, fear, fear is, is all in your head. Fear is an intimidator. Fear is, is a feeling that if you consistently fight against fear, fear will no longer have power over you. Aristotle said one time, fear is pain arising from the, listen, fear is pain arising from the anticipation of evil. Again, fear is pain arising from the anticipation of evil. I've had, I can't tell you how many times that I've, I've purposely done stuff in my life to push myself past a level of fear because I assumed that the thing that I wanted to do was going to be so difficult and so overwhelming that I couldn't possibly do it because the monster was so huge. And so I stepped foot in front of the monster, whatever that is, whatever task that was, and realized that this is not really all that. It's not, there's, there wasn't anything to it. It was really pretty easy. I think that the, the farther away you get mentally from your goals and your dreams, the bigger they seem to be that you can't achieve them. But the closer you get to them, as you take consistent steps every single day, and we don't have time to get into how to do that today on this show. I've shared it many times on, on past shows. That if you take consistent steps forward every day, that the fear decreases con consistently as you take steps closer to your goals and your dreams. Spencer Johnson wrote one time, what you are afraid of is never as bad as what you imagine. Again, what you're afraid of is never as bad as you imagine. The fear you let build up in your mind is worse than the situation that actually exists. Let me slow down and say that again. What you are afraid of is never as bad as what you imagine. And the fear you let build up in your mind is worse than the situation that actually exists. You and I have the power to overcome fear consistently. Because if you don't decide that you're going to face fear, that you, that you have a choice to face fear every day and push through some of the most intimidating times of your life, you're not gonna reach a level of success. You're not gonna reach a destiny, if you will. I'll use that word destiny. That is only reserved for those people 
who consistently push and work absolutely the hardest of anybody that they know. In fact, there's an old saying that says you need to be the hardest working person in the room. You need to be the hardest working person in the room. And in my life, and I can only tell you from experience, and I'm not going to go into the details of that particular concept, but let me tell you this. The people that are the most persistent, the people that are the most consistent, the people that are most passionate are the ones across the board who achieve their goals and their dreams. Today, I want to encourage you, do not let fear stand in your way. Face it. It's just a bully. It's a mirage. It's not even there. It's only in your mind. Face it and you will be able to achieve things that you've never imagined possible. My name is John Carver. Thanks for watching and we'll be back soon.